Father, we welcome you here this morning. As we begin this day, would you come and fill this place? Come and fill our hearts. Father, we pray that your strong arms may be found around us today, throughout the whole day. You said we could come and ask you for wisdom. So we ask. We step into that place of your grace one more time.
of your love your provision in that love for us a love we will never I will never fully understand you who are absolutely eternal who can know the depths of your love for us even angels long to understand that even throughout eternity even though we have eternity surely we'll never know the full extent of your love for us.
enter into your life.
Cause nothing on earth is as beautiful as you Yes, you opened my eyes to your wonders anew Captured my heart with this love Cause nothing on earth is as beautiful A kabod. It's such a kabod, a, a, a download of his presence this morning. Uh, and I believe he's just pouring out like, like thick oil all over the room. Just where you're, where you're standing right now, just, just reach out and just like a vessel. We say, oh Lord, everything that I need to be a mountain mover, <laughs> ministering to the mountains, <laughs> bringing life to the mountain. Lord, you're right here this morning everything we need and we are needy because we don't have a clue <laughs> but Lord you do whoa can we just sing that again Jeremy can we just sing it as a, a sort of a song of worship to him because he's your beautiful one but you know what he looks at you and he says well if you aren't the most beautiful ones in my presence this morning he calls you beautiful. Can you imagine he sees us as beautiful? This morning, even at six o'clock this morning, you were beautiful in his eyes. Oh my goodness. Maybe he's gonna sing that over us now. Can we just do it again, Jeremy?
offer up the song of the Spirit to Papa. Offer up the song of the Spirit to him this morning. life changer, <laughs> transformer. <laughs> How many of you feel you're being transformed? Sometimes we don't know it because it's a process, but then all of a sudden, it's like zip. All of a sudden the zipper gets opened up and oh my goodness, I am being transformed. I am being changed. <sighs> yeah, yeah, right that bike there, right? four rows back, right in the center. Yeah, whoa. Yeah, the two ladies, I think it's in pink. Father, thank you for just downloading on them right now. Thank you. Thank you. Oh, I sensed him, him chuckling and laughing, saying, <laughs> you're going to get a lot more than you came for. You're going to get a lot more than you expected. But as you expect and as you take hold, then the more will come. Wow, yeah. Father, I thank you for what you've done from Wednesday night until this morning, that you have released um, your life, your truth in the midst of us that has increased people's expectations. Wow. And Lord, we really needed some eye salve to clear our eyes that we might see things the way you see them. So, wow, thank you. And so we submit ourselves to you this morning. And uh, we're thankful for Heidi being here this morning and for your life within her and that um, what comes forth when her, it's just, it's just one more key. So I thank you for that in Jesus' name. You're lovely. Tell him he's lovely. And tell somebody close to you that they're lovely too and go and find your seat. <laughs> I'm like, Wow. 
we just want to welcome those of you that are watching on the internet. Like, good morning. We're glad that you've chosen to um, be part of this awesome gathering. My name is Mary Audrey Raycroft, and I'm um, part of the team here, and really um, so glad to just welcome you all this morning. Um, interesting. Uh, well, I, I just want you to know that you can be prepared for anything this morning because the Lord's presence is um, very thick <laughs> in places. Some of you may get stuck to the floor. <laughs> wow. Wow. Um, you realize that over the last um, few sessions, eh, he's been releasing, he's promised to give us keys, hasn't he? He says, I give you the keys of the kingdom. We say, thank you very much. What are they? <laughs> and, and so here he's been releasing keys uh, from Wednesday night and right through and with Jerry Anderson and Johnny Edlow and then, whoo, and then Heidi this morning. Um, major, major keys. And you know, this may sound trite, but, but um, I, I really believe he's saying that you're called out once. I know most of the time when people come to conferences and to, to things here, I mean, they're serious about God. For, you know, or they wouldn't be coming. But there's something about this family here, this group that's gathered together from goodness knows where, all over the place. And, and uh, there's something about a seriousness about getting on with the business of the kingdom as led by the Holy Spirit that's, uh, that's different. And so I call you a call, and you, and you need to praise the Lord, but you can also just give a, a, a clap, not for yourselves really, but like you're, none of you are here by accident. It's because God's got a clue for you. Yeah. And when I was standing in worship, uh, the Lord reminded me about a particular little verse of scripture that Paul has written to Timothy. I think it's in 2 sec Timothy. Um, I'm not thinking too well up here at the moment. <laughs> I wonder why. And he says to them, he said, guard the rich deposit. Guard the good deposit that's been laid among you. Guard it with the help of the Holy Spirit. And I sensed an urgency inside to um, really encourage myself and then encourage all of us here that, that we need to really um, pay attention and, and guard, take hold of, and not let it just kind of dribble away with the molehills of life. Anybody had any molehills in the last two days? Anybody had any molehills in the last four hours? And I almost made it a mountain. And I want you to just look at the things in your life that come just from natural life and then could also be set ups by the enemy to draw us away from, from the main issues. And I think that's what our speakers for this conference are here is to draw our eyes from little old me. And just because my kitchen sink blew up this morning when my cleaning lady arrived and my husband's had eye surgery and can't see, and the things are all rotten under the sink and it's pouring out on the kitchen floor and all this is at 7 o'clock this morning. And I said, but I've got to get to the church. And, I, and, I, and, and is it, is it um, Jerry Anderson would have been really proud of me because I immediately flipped into the red. And I thought, oh dear, now we need an attitude check here. I wonder which of the categories of the 10 we're doing. Restraint. It was marvelous restraint. <laughs> yeah, it wasn't confrontation. It was, yeah, it was definitely restraint. And I did my usual cop-out, saying, well, deal with it, I'm out of here. <laughs> uh, but you know, there's, there's the mole hills of everyday life, which if we're not careful, seem like these huge, great big mountains. And in God's economy, does it really matter? And so I just... Uh, I'm excited. I'm so sorry I wasn't able to be here last night. And I am one of the first ones back there to get the DVD of last night's meeting. And I just want to remind you that you uh, order, uh, you know, at lunchtime or whenever it's convenient, but not during the meeting. Make sure you order your CDs and your DVDs and your MP3s from the Resource Center. and Get your name in for them because I think these are really um, life-changing things that we're learning. Whoa. Um, 
I don't have all the facts on this, but because I've had three emails in the last day from different intercessory groups um, and from YWAM, I understand that there is a uh, situation happening. Oh, you're shaking your head, so it's true. You know, we get all sorts of stuff, and we're not sure if it's a scam or not. There's a real um, a potential for um, some uh, real problems in Haiti right now. The water supply, for some reason or other, is contaminated. Huh? Oh, 138 dead already. There seems to be something flowing through Haiti in that place of, of coming into restoration that is, uh, is, is, is trying to take a number of people out. And so it's a mountain. It is a major mountain. And I asked Heidi when she came in this morning if she would um, be the one who would... Ver I can pray about it, so can you. But somehow from somebody that's lived in the nation where, where there are th these things seem to just sneak in all the time to, with the de design to, to destroy and kill. And so I asked her if she would just uh, come and pray uh, for this situation in Haiti uh, and however the Holy Spirit leads her. If you can stand up up here. Yeah, let's just lift our hands, let's pray, and let's command, too, that this, um, this would stop. Let's just pray in the Spirit. Right now, Lord, we know we're not just supposed to weep over the situation, Lord. We know that you have given us authority, authority, authority to say, let it be reversed in Jesus' name. Let it be reversed in Jesus' name. We take authority over the situation, over every parasite, over every bacteria, over everything that is in that water that is not to be in that water. We command it to die in Jesus' name. We say reverse the situation just as you did during the floods, just as you did during the riot, just as you did during all the hell and chaos. God, we ask for your kingdom right now. Shakarabah. Just, just a little longer. There's something you sometimes don't understand what your prayer means, what your prayer means, how much authority you have. We need to shaka, just shift the situation. We shift it. We shift it in the spirit realm. We shift it in the natural realm. Shaka, we say no to the dying, no to the dying, no to the dying. Shaka, bring your solutions, God. Bring your solutions, God. Bring your people, bring your children with your solutions. Bring your glory. Reverse the situation. God, we believe that we'll see on the news that it'll be reversed because of Shaka, your glory and your kingdom and prayer and belief and trust. Shaka, shaka rebe, in Jesus' name. Wow. 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 Well, uh, how, for how many was that your first um, introduction to Heidi? <laughs> yeah. Oh. <laughs> wow. When you're back in the resource center, there's some things you want to look at. Riches of the poor. <laughs> Heidi Baker, the woman in the dirt. Tremendous DVD. The story of the poorest nation in the world. And the miracles that are happening there because of ones who have mountain moving faith. And uh, Compelled by Love. Another book by, he it's a book by Heidi and how to change the world through the simple power of love in action. So I know that you're going to want to have uh, these two items here. And then Heidi's husband, Roland, his grandfather, oh, was a great grandfather, this one, his grandfather, uh, grandparents, uh, okay, um, Mr. Baker, H.J. Baker, wrote the classic Visions Beyond the Veil. And uh, he also wrote Heaven and the Angels. And so I hadn't seen this one before, so I'm not sure this is fairly freshly out. So you just enjoy that as well. And I love the worship when, well, I love all our worship teams, but I, I really love it when Connie and Jeremy and the whole team uh, lead us. And so we're really thankful for that. And, and the artists this morning, okay, this is amazing. It's lovely. This is quite a tree back here. I love the tree, Christine, yeah. And I love the lantern. 
Wow, that's gorgeous. It's gorgeous. We just love the creativity being expressed. That mountain of arts. <laughs> The arts and, uh, and the media and all the ways of expressing things. It's absolutely amazing. So, there, so there's two CDs here that Jerry, and Jer Jerry, I'm having a hard time articulating how he's going to have fun up here, I can see. Song of the Bride and Come Away, My Beloved. Absolutely beautiful, mellow worship. Just draws you into, a, into his presence. So avail yourself of all the, you know, great product that's there in the resource center. Just one announcement and then we're gonna have Heidi back up because we want to give her an amazing amount of time. First of all, Partners in Harvest lunch. Upstairs, 12.30 for senior pastors, senior pastors and leaders in the Partners and partners in, in Harvest stream. That's at 12.30 today. And then there's an information upstairs as well. There's an information um, session going to go on for those of you that are interested in finding out what Partners in Harvest is all about. That's at 5 o'clock today in the upper rooms. And if we have world changers here who signed up at the conference, you need to go to the welcome desk to collect your gift. Gee, I should sign up. What's in here? Any world changers that have signed up at this conference, please go to the welcome desk to collect your world changers gift bag. Wow. Be thinking about some testimonies. Be thinking about what the Holy Spirit has spoken to you or done within your heart even during this conference. And... Um, do we still have, Lillian, we still have a testimony forms out there to fill out? Please fill out. You can find them at the front desk. Somebody will steer you to them. And, and it, it's so good to hear what he's done because when there's so many people, it's hard to hear from everybody individually. But we would love to have testimonies from you about what amazing things he's doing in your life. And uh, currently would be best. So um, perhaps this afternoon or tonight we'll have some um, particular testimonies. But I just want to call on... Darling, who's getting down on the floor? I want to call on Heidi to come and <laughs> to crawl up here in her own Heidi way and uh, share what's on her heart for us this morning. We're so glad that you made it. We're so glad that you give of yourself so freely in the midst of mountains. What did you lose? My shoe, that must be prophetic. Wait till I move my stuff all out of here. There you go, honey. Hi, friends. It's good to be here. You know, can we come closer? Let's just get closer. Let's be a family and, yeah. Hot friends. I'm glad to be here. Yeah, just come in, squish in. Let's just be close, and let's worship God. I'm so happy to be here. Steve and Sandra were just with us in Mozambique. It was such a joy to have them, and, and uh, yeah, we just want to be family, don't you think? <laughs> yeah, we want God to wreck us. We've been... Um, yeah, you can use seats and floor. Depends how old you are <laughs> or where you want to be. Let's just, let's just pray. Yeah, and squish in the middle seats. Let's just pray and ask God to get us, okay? And if you love Jesus and you don't have any demons, then you feel led to pray for someone next to you, go for it. Um, Sheka, let's just, let's just pray a little more. We want the presence. I'm all for the mountains shaking and taking over, but ha, I really want the presence more than anything else. I'm desperate for you, God. Let's just, let's just worship him a little longer. Shakaraba. Oh, come on, guys. Yeah, and then, then, then we're going to pray somebody next to us gets toasted. We just want, we, I tell you, you're going to have more strategies and ideas for, for the world and for what God wants when you're wrecked than any other time. Shakaraba. And we come to this house just to get in, be in the presence, and to love on you, Jesus. Whoa! Shaka. Whoa! Sandorobo Sunday. Let's just pray, guys. We need to pray a little longer. Shandaraba Haye. Yay. Yay. 
you to, to lay hands on one person right now, just one, and pray. They go up and in, up and in, up and in, and hear, hear the voice of God. Pray that right now. Shaka, up and in, up and in. Pray right now. Take them up, take them in, take them up, take them in. Whoa, shaka baba. God, we want to go up. Yay, yeah, yay, yeah. up, 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 up. In, in, in. Whoa, shika. God, I thank you that the hungry get fed. The hungry get fed. The hungry get fed. Shaka, shaka. We're gonna, we come to you today. God, we come to you today. Pour in spirits. We come, pour in spirit. We come knowing we're in need. God, we come, we come. Shaka, rebe, santu. Shaka, rebe, santu. Don't leave us like this. Yay, shaka baba. Just a little longer. I just, I just feel like, like as believers, just like we can shift the atmosphere and the circumstances in Haiti, we could shift the atmosphere and the circumstances in Toronto. We could shift. We could shift things by our hunger, by, by his presence in and through us. Shaka. So we're just going to pray again. Sometimes as believers, we come complacent. It's like just waiting. But sometimes, shaka, we're called to move God. We're called to move God with our presence. Do you understand what I'm saying? We're called to move his heart, to bring his heart joy, to bring his heart gladness, to come like little children hungry for him and his love and his presence. How will we transform this dying world? We'll transform it by the power of his love. So just a little longer, show, pray for somebody. Pray God, crash in on her. Crash in on her. Crash in. Shaka. Rebe. Santu. Crash in God. God, we don't want to stay like this. Jesus, we want to be different. Shaka. We want to be undone, 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 undone. Whoa. Up and in, up and in, up and in, God. Shanda Robosonte. Take us up and in, up and in, up and in. Hey, are you hungry for Holy Spirit today? Are you hungry, 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 thirsty? Shakara be the hungry get fed, the hungry get fed, the hungry get fed. Shakara be, shakara be, shakara be, shakara be. Oh, Jesus. Shift, Lord, shift, Lord, shift, Lord, shift, Lord. Shakari be, ay, 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 ay. God, crash in on us, God. Shakara ba, sundara ba, shandai. Keep praying, keep praying, keep praying. Crash in, crash in, crash in. Crash in, crash in. Crash in, crash in, crash in. Crash in, she. Crash in God. Shakara baba, shakara baba, shakara baba. Break in, crash in. God, shambaba, shambaba, re baba, sonde. Oh God, oh God, oh God. Sondara ba, shandara ba, sondara ba, shandai. Oh God, oh God, oh God, oh God. Oh God, oh God, oh God, oh God. Jesus. We want to represent you well, Daddy. We want to walk in your shoes. We want to walk in your footsteps, Daddy. Shy, 
I just, I just really feel, really feel from the Lord that the hungry, the hungry, the hungry get fed. And you can literally pull the presence down with your hunger. You can pull it down with your hunger and thirst because it's him, it's him, it's him, it's him. Shaka, blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of God. Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of God. Blessed are the childlike, for theirs is the kingdom of God. We're praying, we're speaking, we're talking about the kingdom of God in this conference. Shaka, rebe, shaka, rebe. And there is a huge, major, important key. Hunger, hunger, hunger. Hunger, 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 hunger. Shakare be, 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 be. God, oh God, oh God, I'm hungry for more. I'm hungry for more. I'm hungry for more. Lord, do it again. Do it again. Do it again. Do it again. What you've done in this house, do it again. Do it again. Do it again, Lord. Do more, 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 more. Don't leave us like this. Shakara bebe. Shakara bebe. Shakara babe. Shakara babe. Don't leave us like this. Shakara baba. Shakara baba. Oh God, oh God, oh God, shakara bay, shakara bay, shakara bay. God, we just come. Shandai rebe, santu rebe, shanta rebe, shanta rebe. God, I'm praying for whirlwinds, whirlwinds. I'm praying for whirlwinds, God, of your spirit. Shakara bay, shakara bay, shakara bay, shakara bay. Whirlwinds of your spirit, whirlwinds of your spirit. Whoa, shandai rebe, shandai. Oh God, oh God, oh God, oh God. I pray, Lord, all during this message, people just get toasted, totally toasted, wrecked, wrecked and toasted. God, that they don't try to suck it up and be something. But Lord, they just let you take over and you be, you be everything in them because you're the king of glory. And you'll take your little sons and daughters, your little lovers, and you will cause them, Lord, to stand on mountains and descend to the deepest valleys of hell on this earth. Oh God, you will take your children all over the world World to situations, hellish situations, glory situations. Oh God, you're God. All we want, Lord, is to be possessed by you, to move like you move, to do what you do, to say what you say, to go where you go. God, we don't shundai. We don't feel at all led to strive. We learned in this house how to lay down. We learned in this house how to just be your sons and daughters. And God, as we learned how to not strive and lay down, we also learned that you will pick us up on the wings of your spirit and you will send us out to see a dying world shundai transformed, shundai by your glory love, shandai rebe, shandai rebe, shandai rebe, shandai rebe. I just feel uh, prophetically that the Lord wants to absolutely undo you again. Hey, shandai, it's almost like in the spirit realm you thought, well now, now we're gonna, now we're gonna ascend to the mountains and move things, and now, now we're gonna grow up. But I want you to understand that as you grow up, you grow down. As you grow up, you grow down. And God wants to transform the world, but it'll be through His laid-down lovers, Shakaraba, who know who they are. And God wants you to know, Shandarabo Sunday, that it does not depend on you, that it depends on Him. But He also also wants you to know, Shaka, that his glory love will pulsate through you, move through you, and as his child, you can dream the dreams of God, and you can see the things that you never saw before. Shaka Rabba, God is looking across the earth for lovers. Shandai, he's looking for lovers. He's looking for lovers who will live in love and obey. Shaka, live in love and obey. Live in love and obey. Whoa, live in love and obey. And it's easy to obey when you're in love. Thank you, Jesus. So, Lord, show, show. I pray you release the keys, Lord. 
You just release the keys today. Shaka Rabba, release the keys today. Yay, Jesus. Wow, 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 wow. Wow. Where's my Biblia? Oh. Yay. Oh. That's where I could stay. <laughs> One time somebody said, just uh, start... Um, we were worshiping, and I was with some really good friends. In fact, I believe Steve was in, the, in that meeting. It was Joanne and Steve and, and uh, another Steve, and we were just worshiping, and the conference leader said, just uh, start whenever you feel led to. And uh, seven hours later, <laughs> I was like, shy, just out of glory. And just um, so... Yeah, you might not want to say that to me. <laughs> oh, I love this place. I love the presence in this place. I love being here with you. And um, hey, I feel like God did give me a message from John 14. <sighs> Don't shift out. Stay in. <laughs> I feel that. All the people always trying to, oh, shift out, shift up, whatever. No, stay wrecked. It's not overrated. Whoa. It's not overrated to be totally toasted. You can say, well, how, how, how are we going to move the world and shake the nations or move the mountains or what's it called? The conference? What? Mountain movers. Sorry, but move. Okay, how are you going to do that? Certainly not in your strength. Hello. Come on. We cannot move mountains in our strength. We cannot suddenly grow up and be, wow, snazzy people. There's something shundai powerful about laying down. And I want to tell you about some experiences that I've had on this very floor that have caused me to step into a new dimension in this area of seeing God bring transformation in a nation. People have always asked me, and they speak over me and ask me, don't you feel called to the nations, plural? And it's both yes and no. I want to explain myself. When God calls you to see transformation, he calls you to see transformation, not just talk about it. And we're called to step into a place like a hellish place in the natural realm and see God transform it. And so I was called by God to step into the poorest nation, the most desperate, poorest, dying, broken, hellish nation on the planet, and believe God for that one to be transformed. And I'm still in the process, and it will take me the rest of my life. But I will pour my life out believing that God can use little lovers in the dirt to see his purposes fulfilled. Whoa, and as I travel one-third to the rest of the nations, it's to call you, Shundai, into your destiny as lovers of God, as radical lovers, as people who are compelled by love out to the broken places. There was a conference going on here. It was a Father Loves You conference, and I, I, I was feeling like they had invited, a little bit like today, they had invited the wrong person because I was one of the speakers and I'm saying, well, you know, I, I, I got saved in Pentecostal holiness tradition. They were oneness and I didn't, hey, Angela. <laughs> they were oneness and um, I, I, I was theologically Trinitarian, but I didn't really understand the whole Father Heart thing that well. And uh, obviously in my mind, but my heart. And, and I was there with Jack Winter and Jack Frost and John Arnett. And so I was thinking, you know, hello. I wish, you know, they had just left it with the three and I could have just come and laid here on the floor. But you see, God knows what he's doing and he knows who he's sending. 
So I laid on the floor preparing as they generally do on my face, crying out, come, help, help. That's my prayer. I'm sticking with it. <laughs> help, God, help, God. And I was there, shaka baba, and God just crashed in on me. And I saw, if you're a theologian, I want you to understand that I'm not speaking about him coming in his full glory, but Father came to me, and he, Shabba, smiled on me. When I saw Father smile upon me, it changed everything. Hey, John. It changed everything because Father God smiled. And when I saw his smile, I was undone. Because I realized just the love that he has in, my, in his heart for me. And then he handed me keys. And I believe that these keys are for us. As you're here to be undone again, but you're here also to receive an impartation of more. So that you would shake the world with his love. Is that true? Is this the right place and the right time? Do you want to... Hi, my friend. I love you. Whoa, you can use my pillow. Oh, you got it. Good. <laughs> Yay. We want to shake. Yeah, it is. It's my soaking pillow. <laughs> we want to shake the world. So God came. Father, Daddy came right up here. All, some of my best experiences in my whole life have happened on this floor, and I'm ready for more. I'm just, I'm just in between times where I'm sharing. I'm just going to lay here and just go, ah! I love it. Ah! So he came and he handed me keys. And there were massive keys. And he said, now I want to take you into the rooms. I found it in the book later after the experience. But just to help you out, I'm going to read it in the book. John 14. Do not let your hearts be troubled. Trust in God. Do you trust him? Do you understand that the world's shaking? <laughs> we want to see it transformed. But it's shaking. I live in an area where people die. Half the children under five years old die before they reach five. I live in a nation where people die of starvation. And so when we speak about transforming the world, we need to understand what God sees. And we need to see what he sees and do what he does. And not look at the situation simply to benefit our own lives so that we might stand in a higher place. But look at the situation, the way Father looks at it, that every child is created in his image, and every child is lovely, whether they're retarded, whether they have bloated bellies and worms, or whether they're the CEO of Microsoft. We need to understand that God sees every child as beloved to him. And we speak about transformation. We need to think and feel and wonder about the way God, our Father, feels about every human being on this planet. And we will never leave the low to reach the highest. We will see the heart of God in every human being. In every human being. Every human being is equally valuable in the kingdom of God. There is no human being less valuable to God. Some may have power and some may have no voice. But every human being is created in the image of God. And is lovely and precious and beautiful to the master. And as you step into your identity as a son, your identity as a daughter, your identity as a man, as a woman of God, you step into your destiny, whatever your destiny may be. 
and you start to dream the dreams of God. Trust. Trust is a huge thing. Whoa, trust, trust. Don't let your heart be troubled. Trust in God. <laughs> I, I just, before I finish talking about the keys, I want to tell you about a situation that happened um, last month. Uh, my life's a little interesting. And it was an interesting week last month, one of my weeks, <laughs> much like this one. Hey, and I was, uh, I was actually speaking uh, in Hawaii. We got to be with John and Carol, and we were with friends, and we were so blessed. And then we went to a conference to speak. And we were in Maui speaking, and I remember just trying to, I was about to finish the message, and Roland did something very uncustomary for him. He walked up behind me, and he tapped me on the shoulder. And I'm thinking, okay, okay, like, is my time up? <laughs> and he tapped me on the shoulder, and he said, our plane has just gone down. I said, oh, Sorry, honey, how's the pilot alive? That's all I cared about. Our plane had just crashed. And as he tapped me, I, I looked at him because that's, you know, his father, everybody has father heart hug things, you know, that when God blesses you and he just gives you something special or blesses you, that, that Cessna that just goes to the bush bush, that was Roland's father heart hug. That was his really beautiful thing. He just really loved it. Not, not above anything else, but, you know, he liked it a lot. And I looked at him. I said, well, where's the pilot? He said, they can't find the pilot. We know he's alive because they radio radioed us. So I said, well, okay, what are we going to do? It was a big conference. There were people everywhere. It was jammed in. And uh, I said, okay, what do you want to do? Let's start worshiping. First we interceded for the situation, and we started worshiping. And we're worshiping, and people just started getting blasted all over. And I watched Roland, who had just lost his, his most precious possession on earth. I watched him just like a little child running around, and people just getting completely undone, rolling all over the floor as the glory of God hit. And I thought, wow. This is transformation. It all depends on how you look at the situation. And the same day, I flew to Kona. And uh, it was very interesting. You asked me to pray over the Haiti situation because I have this thing where I believe we can command weather and systems and situations to change. And I really believe it with all my heart. Do not let your heart be troubled trusting God. Whoa! So I was shaka in this place where I was trusting God, and the Lord said, I want you to decree, declare, and prophesy. There were riots going on that very same day. They were burning buses outside of one of our big children's villages. Our staff, we were on the phone with them. We were talking to our staff. They said, our eyes are burning with tear gas. This is my, I'm talking about a current situation. Our eyes are burning with tear gas. Our schools have been closed. Our, our clinic has been closed. All of our trucks have been grounded, and we're in a hellish situation. And now our plane is crashed. This is one day in my life. So I, I, I said to God, Lord, what do you want me to do? And I was there with a group. I love YWAM. They're just an amazing bunch of radical world changers. And I love being in the room with them. And he said, now prophesy and declare and decree what I'm about to do. So I began to prophesy, before this night is over, they will find the pilots. Before Monday, it was a Friday, before Monday, all of the riots in Maputo will be stopped. And it will be on the front page of the newspapers. I began to declare and decree. I began to declare and decree because God said, you shift it by your declaration, by your decree, by your prophetic word, and by your heart focusing on me. 
10, 15, I got a text, pilot found. 60 kilometers in the bush bush. No uh, lights, no electricity, nothing, no, no signal. Miracle, huge miracle. Pilot found, he's alive, plane totaled. Sorry, Peter. <laughs> I was just jumping around so full of joy. Watch out, God will give us a bigger plane. <laughs> and then I said, all right, Monday's coming. In the newspapers, all riots stopped. Don't understand why. Everything's peaceful. Come on. Shaka. When you speak about moving mountains and changing nations, you are called to the situation you are living in. And wherever he puts you, not some intangible, woo, but right here, right now. Like when God allows us to hear about Haiti, we think about Haiti and we believe and we trust. And maybe 20 of us in this room go. Do not let your hearts be troubled. Whoa. Trust in me. In my Father's house are many rooms. If it were not so, I would not have told you. I'm going there to prepare a place for you. And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come back and take you to be with me, that you may also be where I am. You know the way to the place where I am going. Do you all remember the prayer of Jesus? <laughs> Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done. Where? Shaka. What does a kingdom look like? Does the kingdom of heaven look like children dying of starvation, AIDS, cholera? Does the kingdom of heaven look like old women dying in old folks' homes of Alzheimer's with no one visiting them? Does the kingdom of heaven look like the Ivy Leagues unknowingly lost in the power of humanism? Does the kingdom of God look like collapsed economies and broken lives? What are we called to bring? Where are we called? Shaka to live. What are we called to do with this little life? You only have one little life to give. And your little life can be powerful or meaningless on earth. You will never be meaningless to the Father because you are created in his image. But on this earth, in this world, you only have one life to live. What are you going to do with your little life? I'm pausing for a reason. What are you going to do with your little life? What is God calling you to do with your little life? There is a reason that I do not want to travel more than a third because I know that as I spend two-thirds of my life in Cabo Delgado, Mozambique, I will see God transform a city, a province, and a nation. And I want to see what he promises me in the natural realm as well as the spiritual realm. I want to believe my God who is God. 
back to the keys. Father handed me keys. The first key was to a warehouse, and it had incredibly huge amounts of food. And some of you have heard about these keys, but the warehouse had no end. It went to the far to my right and far to my left, and there was no end to it. And I believed that God literally said to me that I had full access to that room as his little daughter. Hey, hey. Now, I, I just, oh, I wish I could just hug you all and then shake you. Um, <laughs> I really do. Shaka. It's like, Daddy loves you. Now get up <laughs> and lay down and get up and lay down and get up and lay down and shake the world with the glory of his love. You see, it's not either or. It's both and more. It's not either or, it's both and more. It's not the rich and the high and the powerful or the poor and the dirt and the lowly. It's both and more. It's both and more. If you have keys to a warehouse with all the food that you have access into that room, what are you going to do with it? Eat there, you and your family of four. How much food can you eat? We've had many natural disasters. When natural disasters hit, I pray, I ask God what to do. Our staff, our family, every one of us, we pray and we ask God what to do. When I was, when I was years ago, he used to say, ah, I want you to believe to feed your family. And it took a lot of faith. We were very skinny. Very, very skinny. But we believed God that we would not die. We were, some of you don't even believe that. You don't even understand that. But we went on a one-way ticket in $30, and we never believed in writing and begging. And, and so we literally were hungry many, many days. But we believed God, and we grew in faith and trust and faith and trust until we could feed our family, until we could eat enough to not be hungry, until we could feed our two children, and then we could feed the people around us, and then we could feed a hundred, and then we could feed a thousand, and then we could feed ten thousand, and twenty thousand, and fifty thousand, and a hundred thousand people a day. Shaka, because God is God's. And he's given us keys. When you take a key and you step into the kingdom, then you are responsible for what God has asked of you. And if you lose the presence, if you lose the peace, if you lose the realm of his glory, then you have lost everything. Because it's this intimate love with him that wholly compels us. And as you fall in love with him and you take the keys and you go out, the world shakes because he is God. Hmm. After that vision, after that powerful vision, we've never said no to taking in a single dying child ever. Not once, not myself, not my staff. Nobody has ever said no to taking in a hungry child. We've never said there might not be enough. We better calculate. We better figure it out. No, if God asks you to change a nation by his spirit, then God will give you the authority and the power and the provision you need to see it shift. Second key, body parts. Second key, body parts. Now, I, God, Holy Spirit's nice to me. He said, tell them about the farm. Okay, I'm telling you about the farm. The provision room had all the food in it. Well, God started speaking to me when the economy started shaking. He said, I want you to believe me, you and your movement. When I speak about what God's saying to me, he speaks it to our movement. He said, I want you to grow food. I want you to grow food. So we started buying farms. 
We started buying farms, and the widow women and, and the poorest of the poor started working the farms. In Malawi, we have so much food in the farms that, that it's, it's literally supernatural crops. Yeah, wow. And the people that were given the seeds bring back 10% to feed the orphans and the widows. The farm now in Cabo Delgado, we, we started praying over the ground and we started to, to pour out water and oil and pray over the ground. And we believe this year, we just got the farm in August, this big farm, we just believe God's going to bring us supernatural crops there. The crops in the south of Mozambique are so huge that people are taking pictures of the size of the vegetables and fruits. This is our God. Now, when he says you have keys to a warehouse, you need to understand what part of the picture you play. Yes, every day you lay down. Every day you're in the glory. Don't ever shift yourself out of that place. If you do, you've lost already. But as you lay down, God will speak to you about your day, about your week, about his heart and his love and his life and where you're to go and what you're to do and what you're not to do and where you're not to go. God will speak to you because you're his child. Second place, body parts. He said, when I tell you, you can go in here, and I saw eyeballs, and I saw ears, and I saw stomachs, and I saw knees, and I saw feet, and I saw all of these things, and I was so excited. For the last three years, the deaf have all been hearing in Cabo Delgado, Mozambique. For three years, two PhDs from Harvard came. They heard me speak about it at a conference. It's in the medical journals. They've written it up. Two PhDs. They said, we're going to test everyone. They asked my permission. I said, of course. I'm not worried. God's not worried. Why would God be worried about all your instruments? Bring them on. I said, welcome, welcome. Hoyo, hoyo, manchina na yesu. And here they came. Two PhDs from Harvard. I said, hook up all your machines. I'll take you to the bush bush. So they said, don't you touch anyone. I said, no, no, no. I'm not touching anyone. No, hook them up. I told all my children, don't touch anyone. <laughs> so the children hovered around, and we're waiting, and that was the hardest thing to wait for them to test all these people. We called the deaf seven Deaf people came the first night, seven deaf people. They were called. We told the whole village, bring every deaf person in the village. And, you, you know, I've said it before, but it's funny because they don't hear. So you have to find somebody to tell them and wake them and get them out of their house. And, and uh, so we finally got these seven deaf people, and they tested them. And then they said, now you can pray. So there we went. This is in the bush bush. We went there, and they tested them all and had all of their charts and graphs. And I said, if we can pray. I'm like a little kid in a candy store, like, ah, yay, we get to pray now, we get to pray now. And, and so we started grabbing these deaf people and hugging them and praying, my little children praying, and we spit on our fingers and stick them in their ears, and they start, ah, ah, ah. They all heard, and the, my friends, these doctors, fell down in the dirt, sobbing. <laughs> yeah. And uh, you, can, you, can, you can check it out. It's in the medical journals. Healing through prayer. Yay, God. Isn't that a beautiful thing? So that's the power of God. But he also called us to build medical clinics. He also called us to get Land Rovers that go into the Bush Bush mobile medical units to take bush planes out to the dying and the broken. And we pray for the sick, but we also have doctors and nurses and people who give themselves to hold the broken, the sick, the dying in their arms. After three years, we got a license to build our hospital. And we will break ground, I believe, and I'll declare a decree in January. 
Hey, God is a God of transformation. When you take the key, he speaks to you about what to do. And he heals the deaf, and he heals the blind, and he heals the cripple. But he also calls medical doctors and nurses and scientists by the power of his glory love to lay themselves down for the gospel's sake to bring transformation. I was so excited. I, I, I have this passion for the Ivy Leagues. I have a major passion for the Ivy Leagues. I studied a long time, and I, I know the environment, and so I have this great passion to, to just see them shaken by the love of God because I feel like there are all these sons and daughters sitting there uh, not knowing who they are. And so I was speaking at MIT and Harvard, and uh, I, I was enjoying myself because the, the, the hall was full, and the students were really hungry. And the university, this was MIT, the university paid for the events. <laughs> Come on! And the place was full. And all along the halls of MIT, there were these posters, what would happen if the world would be transformed by love? And I was so excited to see what God was going to do. And I thought, I'm not going to shift. I'm not going to be to pretend to do something different. I, I just called them forward for an altar call to get totally undone by God. And I started speaking their destinies out. I said, someone here in this room is called to see a cure for AIDS. And I believed it with all my heart. I said, someone here will see a cure for AIDS. And all these hundreds of kids came up and they were shaking and sobbing and blasted on the ground in MIT Hall. And this girl, I, I saw her, she was an Asian girl, and I reached over and she was just vibrating and dripping. She was so, the power of God was just pulsating through this girl. I said, I, I, she couldn't speak, obviously. <laughs> and hours later, I went to her and I said, sweetie, what are you called to do? She said, I'm working on a cure for AIDS. I'm finishing my PhD this year. And she said, oh, God's just spoken to me. It's going to happen. I said, yeah. Come on. Whoa. See, <laughs> you are a unique child. You are not called to copy anyone. You know you've heard this. It's a cliche. But copies are not worth anything. It's the originals. It's the originals. It's the originals. It's the originals. We're called to step into our destiny, what our destiny is, and our destiny is beyond anything we have even hoped or imagined. It goes beyond. It goes further. I was, <laughs> oh, I've been given more keys. I've been given keys, and I understand that this, they're all about the kingdom, but I was given keys, not at this meeting, but another meeting where, where I was given keys to the library room, and I started getting strategies, and God said, now I want you to build a church every five kilometers, your movement. So we started building churches every five kilometers. <laughs> it's called Comunia Nocolieta, Arco Iris, Partners in Harvest Iris. Isn't that wild? There it is. It's, it's just all over. It's just been fun. So... We've been building every 5K, and then the Lord said, now, I want you to put a well in front of every church. I said, yeah, that sounds like a good strategy. Where did I get it? Shaka, on the floor. I didn't get it at a whiteboard. I got it laying down. I didn't get it as I tried to strategize and figure it out. I got it in the spirit realm. God spoke to me. But then I had to get up, get two huge drill rig machines, spend two years finding the right engineers to get them all to work, work through the permits, hire about 35 people to get it working, and pray and fast with my team with a huge amount of effort and tragedy until the well went down and the water came up.
There's a price to pay. I, I could not even go, I couldn't even explain how much went into getting those wells drilled. And then it's all about people that, that give to drill them as well and what, what gift they have and what mountain they're moving to get to that place that they could drill the well. But you see, once there's a church, and in the church is literacy training. So all the people in the village start to learn to read and write. And then instead of them walking 10 hours, eight hours, little children of 10 and 12, instead of them walking when they could be going to school, walking to get water for 10, 12 hours, they simply go and pump it out of the ground at five in the morning and then go to the school that we plant. And God brings transformation. And then they can grow. Instead of the famine hitting them, drought hitting them, they pump the water out of the ground. They're full of the Holy Spirit. They can read, they can write, they can go to school. And now, Shundai, when everybody around the surrounding villages has no food, they come to the church and the church feeds the people. Because God is a God of transformation. And when you, when you shaka, spend time in the glory and in the presence, and you allow him to put his spirit on you, then he gives you his mind. It's very exciting. I'm so excited. I was snorkeling. I was snorkeling. I love to snorkel. And I was snorkeling out in Cabo Delgado, out in front of my house. I was out there just praying and worshiping and snorkeling and just having a great time with God. And he said, I want you to start a university. And I was, I just, ah, yes, Lord. That was two years ago. I will cry now, but that's okay, isn't it? I'm allowed to in your house. <laughs> hey, I'm out there. And God said, start a university. And I thought, what if I hadn't obeyed him when I was 17 years old and he told me to finish my first degree? When I thought the world was all dying and going to hell, and I knew, and I still know that they need the gospel first. And I wasn't willing to finish my education because I thought Africa would be lost before I would be finished. And I was so much difficulty in my spirit to finish, but I finished my first degree. Went to Asia. God spoke to me. He said, I want you to do your master's degree. I said, yes, Lord. And I had to leave Asia. Roland said, do you think it's going to come in the mail? I said, no, honey, I know. I need to sign up. I need to apply. And I, I believed God. I listened to him. And I went, and I spent those 18 hours a day, and I finished the master's degree. And then I was in Hong Kong again, and I'm listening to God, and I was very ill at that time, and I'm working with the poorest of the poor, the most desperate, old women in cages, and God spoke to me, said, go and do your PhD at King's. He spoke to me. What if I had said no any of those times? He could have never come to me in the water, swimming around, and told me to plant a university because I would not have had the tools or the preparation or anything needed to obey him at that time. What you need, God will call you to acquire. And if God has called you to shake the mountains of this world, then God has called you to obedience and radical love, if I had missed any one of those steps, I could never get to the step where I am today. Two years ago, as God spoke to me about that university, I knew that we would need a secondary school. So I met with the Department of Education, and I applied for the secondary school with my Mozambican leaders. I knew that I would need my director of one school. We have 
We have schools all over the place, nine colleges. I knew that I would need that man to have a master's degree and then a PhD. So I said, we will pay for you to get it. Two years later, he has the master's degree. And last Friday, we got the license for our secondary school. Come on. That's another one, but it's the, it's the place where we're building the university. Do you understand? Yay! Shaka baba. But uh, just for fun, just for fun, I want to tell you, I was, I was toasted in the back by your bookstore floor back there with this crazy guy who ro was moving sticks in the air and uh, rulers. And um, I remember just being totally snuckered. Yeah, my friend John, John Scotland, yeah. He was, I, I didn't get him. I just defended after 10 years of university. I, was, I came in the back of here and John was there with his rulers. I'm like, oh, sweet Jesus, the guy's nuts. But, uh, ha, but God, you know, God's just funny. God's funny, and he knows what to do with your little life. And so later, I understood John, and we became good friends. And uh, we were in the back there, uh, um, back there, and these people from another, they were Europeans, sweet people. They came, and they saw me, and I was totally snuckered. I looked like a crazy woman myself. I was, I was more snuckered than John. And the ladies came, and they stomped down, and they looked at me, and they said, how could you do anything like that? You're just a drunkard. And, and the more they talked to me, the more I laughed. <laughs> because I was thinking about my life and, and about what God had asked me to do and how many times I, 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 I've said yes and what I do, where I go, and what he's asked me to do. And the more they yelled at me, the more hilarious it got. And they continued to yell, and they said, you're just despicable. And I, I just got more and more um, snockered. And finally, they walked off in a huff. But I remember that day, because some people don't always understand what goes on here. They'll think, you're just a bunch of idiot nutcases rolling around and doing nothing. The thing is, for me, the presence is what I live for. The glory realms of heaven, the kingdom of God looks like love. And if I stay in love and I allow God to undo me every day, shaka, and fill me with this glory presence, I will run wherever he asks me to run. I will go wherever he asks me to go. I will go to any school. I will go to any garbage dump. I will go to any place on this planet. Shaka, because I'm in love. And I will not trade what some people may see as transformation for presence. I do not believe anyone in this room is called to do that. It's both and more. Fully filled. Shaking the world with the power of the gospel. Third key. I went into a room, the intimate room, and I crawled through a low place and I saw Jesus. And this is something that will matter for this conference because I think some of us, hey, we don't always understand this whole transformation thing. I was in the presence and I was in this place, I was totally undone. And I remember just putting my head on Jesus' chest. And I said, I'm never leaving this place. I never, I don't care about the food. I don't care about the body parts. I don't care. 
I don't care. I even said to God, I don't even care about missions. I just want to live here in this secret place and just, just live here. And I don't ever want to get out or move or do anything. I just want to be a monkus. And I was sobbing, and ne- I didn't ever want to get up. And I've been stuck to this floor seven days and seven nights, and I did not even think or be concerned that I may never get up because the presence of God's glory love is worth more to me than walking or breathing or moving or doing anything or feeding any amount of people. But I did get up. Because I heard him in that place, in this house. And he said, go and get my lost bride. Go and get my lost bride. When you understand how he feels about you and how he feels about the one next to you, then you will give your life for love's sake and you will get up and you will lay down and you will obey because he's worthy. (laughs) Now, what happens next? (laughs) Jesus answered, I'm the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. If you knew me, if you really knew me, you would know my Father as well. From now on, you know him, and you have seen him. Anyone who has seen me has seen the Father. Don't you believe I'm in the Father and the Father's in me? These words I say to you, they're not just my own. Rather, it is my Father living in me who is doing his work. Believe me. What? What? Believe me, Jesus said, when I say that I am in the Father and the Father's in me, or at least believe on the evidence of the miracles themselves. I tell you the truth. Anyone who has faith in me will do what I have been doing. Shaka Baba. So, are you ready to change the world? Wow, that's impressive. (laughs) Do you want to hear another story? Okay. You ready to change the world? Oh, that was better. Okay, (laughs) shaka baba. I want to tell you a little story about miracles. Sometimes people just think about physical miracles, about the deaf and the dumb and the blind. But I want to tell you about the miracle of the heart. Not only was the greatest miracle in my spiritual life being raised from a place where I felt numb spiritually numb again in this house where I felt spiritually numb and God raised me from the dead and sent me to the nation of Mozambique. But God also gave me a heart to believe for transformation. The miracles, if you don't understand the whole situation, at least believe on the miracles themselves. Are there any psychologists or psychiatrists in the room? That's sad. The transformation conference should be full of people in education, <laughs> shaka, and communication, every field. Anyway, if there was someone here that would be able to say an amen to what I'm about to say, but the rest of you just with common sense will also be able to say amen. The children that we picked up in the first base in Maputo. There were children dying in the garbage. One little girl, Zelina, who I'm going to do her wedding for her when I get home. She was sold, like many girls, she was sold for a bottle of Coke. 
piece of bread, cup of mahayo. You know, I know I'm a rascal, but I, I just am. Some people could look at our lives, you know, walking around in the dirt, sitting with the poorest of the poor, and think somehow we've missed the whole transformation thing. But you see, I believe that God has asked us to see what he sees and to never forget the most broken people on the planet and whatever influence we have been given should be used to see transformation, not just for them, but for them. So I found these little children and I brought them home. Me and my beautiful team, we brought them home. And we had nothing. We sat on the street corner praying for our own bread 16 years ago, listening, believing, trusting. We brought them home. We lost everything. We were all homeless. And God spoke to me to start a primary school. I started the primary school believing God. He said, believe me that these children who are the least, who are the most broken, who are the most rejected on the planet, the poorest nation on the earth, the poorest place on the nation, he said, you watch what I will do. We laid hands on them, all of us laying hands on them. The fire of God hit our children. The fire, the same fire that hit us in this house hit our children. The glory hit them. Those little girls that have been sold, their bodies sold for a piece of bread. The glory of God's just flowing through them. And shaka, little boys who had been raped by the police. I watched as God's transforming love shunned, I hit them. Long story short, one day those men who had beat, our, beat up our children, thrown rocks at their heads, told us that we were going to leave the nation, came and knocked on my front door. And they said, please forgive us for trying to kill you and your children. I said, we forgave you years ago. They said, we are from the Department of Education. I knew who they were. Same people that beat our children. They said, we have come to tell you that your school is the best school in the entire nation and your children have the highest grades in the entire nation. <laughs> wow! Shaka, we now have nine of those children in medical school. We have five becoming engineers. All of our senior positions and 14 bases are all taken by children who are raised from the garbage into the realms of glory. <laughs> Yay, God! Yay, God! Yay, God! And the journey has been more difficult than I could ever have imagined. The joy never ends. He is worthy. He's worthy. You just give your little life and watch what your papa, daddy got, what your bridegroom, King Jesus, what your beautiful Holy Spirit friend can do. Yield your little life. Just yield your little life. And whatever he asks of you, say yes. For me, that is a miracle to see little girls who were sold 
become the leaders of the nation. For me, that's a miracle of my God, who is God, who I will love and lay down for for the rest of my life. If you love me, you will obey me. Whatever he asks of you, I am, um, mm, I used to, cry every time I had to leave Mozambique. I thought it was very mean, almost actually I did. Mean of God. I thought, why would he ask me to do that? Go speak to people in the Western world. I was thinking they didn't want to hear, they weren't hungry, they weren't. But I understand now that you are in need of fresh bread that you are just as hungry as the children in the dump, that you're just as needy. It's just a different need that you have. And whatever need you have and whatever need you see around you, God has asked you to step into the presence that you would have more of him that you could feed a dying world. Whatever area you are called to, media, sciences, politics, we're sending our children who are now, after 16 years, we have hundreds and hundreds of children grown up. There's a, there's a reason that we're seeing transformation because we, stuck, we stood with it through all the hellish things. We didn't give up when things shook everywhere. When God calls you to transformation, he's called you to tenacity. When he's called you to a mountain, he's called you to believe. Ha. You know, sometimes we lovers of Holy Spirit, lovers of holy wine, we are often accused of being frivolous, silly, bizarre kind of people. And we're often accused of being ill-prepared. But I want to tell you a story of two different people that really have brought this point home to me and have also caused me to speak about what I'm speaking to you about today. I was in a conference in uh, California and it was, we had a lot of our Iris kids there, and they were sharing testimonies. And one young man named, uh, well, I won't say his name, he got up and he said, I used to run the medical clinic for Iris Ministries. And I'm like, oh, no, sweet Jesus, what's he going to say? And he said, yes, I hadn't even been to the first semester of nursing school. I was sitting there thinking, this is on tape. It's being recorded. The boy didn't even know how to give an injection. But somehow he was in charge of the medical clinic. And Holy Spirit backed him up by the grace of God. And he said, I asked God, red pill, green pill, red pill, green pill. Holy Spirit would tell me, red pill, green pill. I was just, <gasps> Holy Spirit was merciful, and that boy didn't kill anyone. <laughs> but it was probably not the best plan. Sometimes when God backs us up, even when we're ill-prepared, we think we don't need to prepare at all. God's nice, and he saved our necks, and he helped that young man to not kill anyone. 
But believe me, we check out the medical degrees and diplomas of the doctors who run the clinic now. And they had to spend their 10, 15 years in preparation so they could come to the dirt and lay themselves down so that now we could build the hospital that God has called us to build. If you love me, you will obey me. Whatever God asks of you, whatever mountain he asks you to climb, you are called to obey the Holy Spirit and walk through whatever he asks you to walk through. There are preparations involved, tenacity beyond anything you can imagine. Don't flippantly say, I'm called to Hollywood. If you cannot dance or sing or act or direct and you simply want to step in there and shake Hollywood for the glory of God, perhaps you should be prepared or have talent in that area. I've seen people say, I'm going, to, I'm, I'm going to do a huge, I'm going to buy Kmart. One woman told me that. I think it was here. She said, I'm going to buy Kmart. God's told me to buy Kmart, and I'm going to have a huge medical ministry for all the homeless. I said, wow. She said, yeah, I only need four million or something. I said, that's awesome. Have you ever gone across the street and uh, held a homeless person? No, no, I'm waiting for the four million. I'm going to buy Kmart, and then it's going to be a Amazing, and I'm like, I don't think so. I think you need to go across the street and hold one dying man in your arms and let Kmart go for a while and wait and prepare and live and love. Whatever mountain God's called you to climb, whatever place he's called you to go, if you love me, you will obey me, God says. Jesus says. You will obey what I command. I'll ask my father. Ah, this is so good. Shaka mama. I'll ask my father and he'll give you another counselor to be with you forever. The Holy Spirit. The spirit of truth. Oh. <laughs> Yay. Holy Spirit. When I was 16 years old, I was powerfully saved, filled with the Holy Spirit, called to the mission field. I did not know what God would ask or require of me at that time but I simply gave him everything. I could not read through a book. I had such severe dyslexia, the only way that I did well in school up to that point was I memorized everything. I had such severe dyslexia that I was put in the dummy class to learn with the students who could not speak English. I was so powerfully saved by my bridegroom, King Jesus, and so powerfully filled with the Holy Spirit, I went to a meeting, a healing meeting, praying for my parents to be saved. Bam, down I went on the floor, and up I came, seeing perfectly. Wow! God healed that dyslexia, transformed my mind. He knew what I was called to do. If God has asked you to do something, even if you have no ability at the moment, if God's asked you to do it, you believe God and he will make a way where there is no way. Yay! Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit, Holy Spirit, he comes and blasts you and fills you and transforms you and changes you and makes all things possible. All things are possible for those who believe. <laughs> I'm getting wrecked again, but if I think of how I walked in this room 15 years ago, 
and how we were, we were so, we had nothing but a lot of heart and a, a desire to see transformation, but it was just crazy. We, ha we ate dented cans. Our own family ate out of dented cans with no labels. That's how we survived. We just believed God that if he said to take in the children, we would take them in and believe. And I'm sitting, I'm not sitting, I'm standing with both legs. People who know me will understand. And I'm telling you, because of what beautiful Holy Spirit has done in our lives, because of the beauty of Jesus, because of the glorious kingdom presence and an understanding that I am not an orphan. I am a beloved daughter. I can stand here telling you what God has done. Nine colleges. <laughs> Three primary schools. Secondary school. Three medical clinics. Mobile medical clinics. Over 10,000 churches. Cottage industries. Goats. Farms. Salvations. Over a million people say. God. Yay, Jesus. Nothing's impossible for those who believe. Would you stand with me, please? <laughs> God. <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> Oh, God, I want you guys to just focus on him. You see, it just, Holy Spirit really hit me because I am really the least likely probably on the planet to see what I have seen. In the natural realm, I have no extraordinary gifts, talents, or abilities. But I believe, I believe that anything that God says to me, he will do. And every day, no matter whether there's a flood or a famine or a riot, or I'm in the back of the plane in the middle seat, I just say yes. I think that God wants to call you to the most extraordinary destinies. If some of you say, well, I'm just too old. I'm just not bright enough. I'm not good looking enough. I'm not educated enough. I'm not, I'm not, I'm not. But God says, you are as I call you to walk in your destiny, I'll call you to walk in a place of radical obedience 
and I will give you the ability to do what I have asked you to do by the power of my Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit's falling all over this room. You're free if, if you need an invitation. I'm not sure why this is the most free house that I've ever been in, in the world. You're free to come kneel on the altars. Just kneel and give him, say, yes, Lord. Yes to my destiny. If God's called you to medical school and you have dyslexia, yes to being healed. A friend of mine who is extraordinarily successful on Wall Street was at MIT and he said he thought he would fail because he couldn't figure out the problems at all. And he got into the presence and he started crying out to God for, for a brilliant mind. He started to ask God. He said, I want a brilliant mind. I want to be able to understand these problems. I want to be able to understand. I want to bring glory to your name on Wall Street. And God downloaded such a powerful ability, supernatural, even beyond his own ability to understand the problems that he graduated top of his class and is uh, extremely successful on Wall Street. What has God asked you to do? I want you right now to put your hand on your mind, your hand on your mind, your hand on your mind and ask God to download his heart, his strategy to you. Ask God to transform your mind. Some of you, you think you think like an orphan. You think somebody else will climb the mountain. Somebody else, somebody else will see transformation. Somebody else, somebody else. And God is simply asking that you step in to your destiny as a lover who trusts as a lover who believes, as a lover who knows there are no lesser children. That whatever God calls you to is possible. I was told in high school that I should look at vocational training. Because I would never make it to university. Ah. But God. But God. I was told by a very beautiful loving church that by choosing to lay on this floor and be snockered in God that I was choosing to let children die of starvation. But God, but God, but God, by choosing to lay down, God has done the most gloriously beautiful, extraordinarily wonderful things that I could ever have hoped for or imagined. Just lay down today. Yield your heart today. Dream your dreams today. All over this room, God is just downloading dreams and visions. And he's going to give you an understanding of who you are. You are not a lesser child. If God has called you and spoken to you about media, then God will give you the ability, the talent, the tenacity to do what he has asked you to do. If God has called you to financial institutions, then God will give you the ability to understand the problems. But without a dream, without a vision, you perish. What's your dream? 
Does anybody have a dream? Does anybody have a dream? Yes. Yield yourself. Listen to the steps. Listen to the steps. Take the keys in your hand today and dream the dreams of God. No weak-willed children. Children fully filled with the Holy Spirit. Strong, powerful, courageous, humble, dedicated, laid low, soaring high. Children with destinies. Children with ability. Children who believe that whatever God says is possible. Children of transformation. Children like Zelina, children of destiny. Jesus said, if you love me, you'll obey my teaching. Ha. And my Father will love you. And we will come and we will make our home in you. He who does not love me, he doesn't obey my teaching. All that I have spoken while I am still with you, all of this, but the counsel of the Holy Spirit will come, whom the Father will send in my name. He's here right now, guys. He's here right now, sons and daughters. The Transformer himself. He's here right now. That one who lives in you and moves mountains and shakes the world. That one who's longing to fully possess you is here in this room. You want to shake the world? You want to climb the mountains? You want to see glory transformation? Do you want to end child sex trade industry? Do you want a cure for AIDS? For malaria? What do you want? Before you go to lunch, ask God for what you want. And lay your life down that you would be fully possessed by Holy Spirit. More, Lord. 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 It is lunchtime, but before you go, lay hands on somebody too. If you feel led to, and you love Jesus, and pray. Just don't, 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 don't pray any bizarre thing. Just pray, destiny, 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 God. Destiny, God. More, Lord. Holy Spirit, fill. Holy Spirit, fill destiny, 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 destiny. Fire of love, fire of love, fire of love. Some of you have been told you can't do anything. But see, God has a different thing, a different thing to tell you. He says you can do all things. Some of you have been told you're incapable, not able. And some of you have even been laughed at coming to a mountain mover conference. People have snickered as you've told them where you're going. But the Lord says to you, you can do all things.
through Christ Jesus. And if I've called you to move mountains, you will move them by the power of my Holy Spirit. And if I've called you to cast them into the sea, you will cast them into the sea by the power of my Holy Spirit. And if I have called you to study, you will have the capacity and tenacity to study. And if I have called you to media, I will give you what you need to succeed as you obey that which I put in front of you to do every single day. Don't be afraid to lay down. Don't be afraid of hard work. Don't be afraid of failure. Don't be afraid of failure. Don't be afraid of success. Only fear me, says the Lord. to say somebody's called to do a PhD here. Who is that? You're either in the process or you're called to do it. Okay, yeah, you were right next to me. Stay right there. Yeah, <laughs> that's why I was praying for you. Yeah, who else? Anybody called to do a PhD? And I felt like the Lord said, uh, yeah, it's looking like <laughs> it's difficult, but the Lord's power is on you, and the Lord's uh, anointing is on you because you are called by God to do that which he has asked you to do and the Lord's going to give you the strength and the ability and I feel very strongly that this is um he, he you were right near me and that's why I I just kept hearing it and, and I'd already put the microphone down and I know it's lunchtime but the Lord wanted you to know that you are going to finish and you're going to finish well. And you're going to climb the mountain that God has asked you to climb. And you're going to fulfill the destiny that God has asked you to fulfill. Whoa! You're free to go to lunch, I'm sure.
you're, you're, you're free to leave if your heart is saying to do that. But know that this may be your lunchtime. It's having food from the Lord. Okay, now she's being very specific here, so I'm just asking you not line up for other things because she's, she's being very specific. Okay, ma'am. see you back here at two. Could I, um, uh, where's Jeremy? Could I say 215? Could I, uh, just arbitrarily say we begin at 215. Okay. <laughs> 